New Haven, Connecticut is jumping at this moment. The Yale Bulldogs, for the first time, are national champions. Last year's Frozen Four was a celebration of newness, cutting out the traditional powers that have long ruled college hockey. Four first-timers made the trip to Pittsburgh. Now, Philadelphia awaits four more. Teams measured, sculpted, and refined like past champions before them. Just 16 teams will start the journey, and only one will celebrate as champion. to the 2014 NCAA Hockey Championship Selection Show, presented by Northwestern Mutual. It's the best sport with the best people. Welcome in, one of those great people, Dave Starman. I'm John Butchergoss. Welcome to the 2014 Hockey Selection Show. We here at ESPN, so proud to bring you the entire tournament. We love the sport here. And once again, Dave, the sport gave us another thrilling year. So let's bring to you the first four seeds. For those following on Twitter, you saw the NCAA Ice Hockey feed uh, unveil these four number one seeds. And as you can see, Minnesota, the number one overall seed, and they will begin play just in their backyard in St. Paul, Minnesota. And that's where we begin, Dave, in the West Regional, where Minnesota, of course, the number one seed, number one overall seed, and they'll begin their quest to a national championship against Derek Schooley's Robert Morris Colonials. What a great story. They've been on the cusp of this tournament once before, and Derek Schooley got him in, and he's had some issues with, with goaltender. He had a goaltender get hurt, had a freshman have to come in and take over. They have been as hot as any team in the second half. Well coached, mm -hmm. well schooled, no pun intended. Former Motor City Metal Jacket Cody Whiteo, what a year he's having this year. The other matchup, and this is an interesting one. They're St. Cloud State, and get a load of who they will play on ESPNU on Saturday. The Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Talk about a battle of styles there. There is absolutely no similarity to these two teams other than the fact that they play hard. St. Cloud State, three lines deep. Top four defensemen are terrific, and the goaltending is good. Notre Dame has shown an ability to shut down high-flying teams like they did to Boston College in the Hockey's playoff. Love that matchup. It's going to be a great one. Let's go to the Northeast. Worcester and Boston College, number one seed there. Don't forget, they... Uh, have won the last three NCAA titles in even years, 08, 10, and 12. Of course, it's an even year this year, and Boston College begins their quest for another national championship against Denver, and you saw them get into the tournament. Uh, Denver plays so hard, they, they can put bagels up on the scoreboard in terms of how well they can defend and how well they can grind, and their mash line has been terrific over the last couple of games. Boston College high-flying offense. It's a clash of styles once again. Classy tweet last night from George Gwazdecki congratulating Jim Montgomery and his staff. UMass Lowell, they win Hockey East, and they will begin their quest against Mankato. And that's an interesting first-round matchup, and we could have a Hall Hockey East final there. The one thing that Mike Hastings, head coach of Minnesota State, can do is slow a game down and have his team play with pace. I think Normie Bazin and, and UMass Lowell, very similar team to what they were last year. Just improved their senior leadership. He's got that much more experience. Five of the 16 teams are Hockey East teams. Your other number one seed, as we go to the East, Barry Melrose and I will bring you those play-by-play -play games. Union, Schenectady, looking strong as they enter the tournament. They won the ECAC, and they will play the Catamounts of Vermont in the first-round matchup there. The one thing that Vermont can do is play balanced defensively. The head coach, Kevin Snedden, is a brilliant defensive coach. He also was a coach at Union. And Rick Bennett at Union, this team is a machine. Defends hard. It doesn't make a difference if it has a lead. Everybody is bought in. They get back. They play in front of their goaltender. They play with tenacity. 
I don't think anything phases them, especially momentum swings, which are so much a part of the tournament. Nate Lehman was at Union for eight years. Now he's at Providence. They are in the tournament again, their first appearance since 2001. And they take on Quinnipiac, who was certainly losing in the title game last year, looking to get back to the Final Four. Quinnipiac's goaltending with Mike Gartig has been terrific. They got a great first line. And, you know, they're, they're going to face a team in Providence that can bang and boom and mm. shut things down. They, the Providence plays hard. Jones boys, very competitive. Sam Annis, the highest scoring freshman. Go Midwest, young man. Let's go to Cincinnati. Wisconsin wins the Big Ten in thrilling fashion last night. Their number one seed. And holy shnikes, look at that first round matchup. How about that? The two former WCHA teams will get back together. No love lost between this group. I think North Dakota had one hiccup in the second half. Other than that, they have been fantastic. Wisconsin is built, balanced, solid, goaltending, and they've got some win-it-all capability. Ferris State made the Frozen Four back in 2012. They are back in the tournament playing in Cincinnati. Well, they will meet up with a hard-charging Colgate team who came on late this year. These are two teams that can fly under the radar. Ferris State and Bobby Daniels have done a wonderful job this year. They continue to keep building their program. Ferris State has always had goaltending. It's been a huge part of their program. So the Sweet 16 is in the house, and we are set to go. And as you get first impressions, as we saw the brackets come down, what, what struck you first? I think what strikes me is the, the fact that so many teams out of the top 16 with the pairwise had a great opportunity to make the, make mm. the national tournament. You know, Ohio State came within a goal of upsetting Wisconsin and becoming one of those out of the teams. Denver and Miami played the NCHC championship game, both of those teams out of the top 16. So the realignment of all the conferences this year, I think, was a big factor in how this national tournament shaped up. And again, of course, ESPN is your home. All of your games on ESPNU, ESPN2, leading up to the Frozen Four uh, in Philadelphia. Semifinal games on ESPN2, the national championship championship game on ESPN. Let's bring in Don Lucia via the telephone. Of course, Minnesota's head coach and Don, number one overall seed. You got a lot of freshmen on your team. What's your sense as you enter the tournament, uh, the temperature of your team? Well, I think we're excited to be there. The guys have had a great season up till now and uh, certainly are in the right to be in the position we're in. And, and we're as healthy as we've been all season long and can't, get, uh, can't uh, wait to get started here this upcoming weekend. We have a great regional and Looking forward to play Robert Morris, and we have great respect for them and what they've been able to do and win their way into the tournament and the conference championship. You know, Don, this is an interesting team because it's a little smaller than in past years. It's got a ton of speed up front, but you're, you're led by a guy in Hudson Fashing, who I think has had a terrific year and really provides you with, with a lot of two-way play. How has he been and how has he been able to get this team where it is? Well, Hudson's had a great uh, freshman year, and, and like a lot of our freshmen, we've asked them to come in and contribute right away. But the, I think the real strength of our team this year has been its balance. We, we haven't had a team with uh, one go-to guy from an offensive standpoint. We're at our best when we get all four lines playing and playing well. Obviously, the foundation of our team has been our goaltender, Adam Wilcox, and he's had a terrific season, gives us a chance to win every night he plays. And one more, Coach. What's, what's your favorite personality trait of your team? Well, I think the, the steadiness what they've played all season long. Uh, we've had to, uh, played a very good schedule, played a lot of the teams that are in the NCAA tournament, and I think the consistency we've shown uh, all season long has been one of our strengths. Good luck, Coach Lucia. Thank you. So Minnesota, number one overall seed in Don Lucia. They'll begin their quest against Robert Morris. We're going to recap all the bracket brackets. We've got a half hour of all kinds of great college hockey talk. We'll talk to more coaches on the telephone as well. Please come back. The 2014 NCAA Hockey Championship Selection Show is presented by Northwestern Mutual. Proud to be an official corporate partner of the NCAA. Welcome back to the 2014 NCAA Hockey Championship Selection Show, presented by Northwestern Mutual. John Butchergoss, Dave Starman, live in our Charlotte, North Carolina studios as we unveil the top six, the V16 teams in the field this year. And now we break them down uh, regional by regional. Let's go west, young man, and check out the situation in St. Paul. We just talked to John Lachie as Minnesota takes on Robert Morse and really at St. Cloud State, Notre Dame matchup, which is really interesting, Dave. St. Cloud State in the Frozen Four last year in Philadelphia. Uh, they played, had a good run last year, and they built on it this year. They've got some great leadership. Nick Dowd, to me, is as good a 200-foot player as there is in the NCAA, and he's a tremendous leader. Hmm. St. Cloud 
State's head coach Bob Motzko, 10th appearance for the school's second in a row. Of course, Frozen Four appearance last year, Bob, and I want you to compare this year's team to last year's Frozen Four team. Uh, how are they different? Well, there, there are a lot of similarities. I think that's where I got to start. It starts with leadership, and, and Starman was just talking about Nick Dowd and, and the leadership transition we had with Nick Dowd, Kevin Gravel, and Nick Oliver was outstanding. We picked up where we left off last year. We had a terrific first half. You know, there were some bumps the second half, and people wanted to say there was a, you know, we were slowing down, and we didn't. The rest of college hockey picked up, and you just saw what great races we had down the stretch. Um, we had a little hiccup there in the first round, uh, but but overall, we were very consistent from, from start to finish. Uh, um, we had tremendous offense, and we just got better as a hockey team with great leadership. Bob, the one thing that we have seen this year with the NCHC is the fact that there's no nights off, and you get to this point in the season very, very battle-tested. You mentioned the hiccup with Miami, but what does the season that you just completed and that playoff series with Miami do in terms of raising that battle-tested level going to the national tournament? Well, I think all the teams are ready to go in your test. The excitement level, it just never gets old. This is what we play for to get in the NCAA tournament. Um, we are battle-tested as a group. This is going to be a great region in St. Paul. And, and we're excited. You know, our fans didn't get the opportunity last week to go down, and they're going to get the opportunity to come down there. And that's, uh, I think that's where we're really uh, excited, the fact that our fan base can get down there. We're back in the tournament. And every tournament's new. Uh, you really no experience from last year. You just got to start with the, the fresh button, and we are fresh right now. That game on ESPNU, 9 o'clock Eastern, 8 o'clock in Minnesota. And, Bob, talk about the style of this matchup. Notre Dame had a, some nice matchups against Boston College. They must feel pretty confident about shutting down a good offensive team. And how do you deal with that from your perspective? Well, the, Notre Dame is an outstanding team, and there's no question they, you know, they down the stretch might have been one of the, they were the hottest teams down down the stretch, but, you know, one game shot, they, they did get knocked off this last week, and they're going to be recharged, ready to go. They're, they are an outstanding defensive team, and I believe they have 10 seniors, and, and that's always a, a strength of a team when you have leadership like that back. I just said it, you know, we had a great a great matchup with them last year, and it sets up this year. Two years in a row, we're going to have to go against each other. Good luck, Bob. All right, thanks so much. Going up against Notre Dame, Steve Summerhays leads the nation with seven shutouts. All right, let's check out our next regional here in uh, Ferris State. Such a strong year for most of the year. Goes up against Colgate. We talked a lot about the North Dakota-Wisconsin matchup so far, Dave. But talk about Ferris State and that Colgate matchup. This is one of the you know, team that could slip into the Frozen Four. That wouldn't surprise anybody. I don't think any time Ferris State has success, it surprises anybody. Just because of the fact that they're so well coached with Bobby Daniels at the helm and his big game experience. And the one thing Ferris State always does, they play hard but they're balanced you look at Ferris and there's never any stars in that lineup but there's always guys that can make big plays whether it be on the back end or up front and they can come at you in ways they've got size they've got strength they played a good schedule a different schedule this year when you change conferences and can be as successful as you are in your old conference mm -hmm. you got something going on and like they are just well led and Colgate Darcy Murphy 19 goals led their team let's go to the Northeast Regional again in Worcester competitive here and we'll focus on Boston College because we're about to talk to their coach Jerry York uh, Johnny Gaudreau 32 goals 69 points 17 points clear of the next highest point getter the only thing that scares you about Boston College is as good as that number one line is it drops off a little bit after that they've got a lot of speed but they don't have that back-to-back -back double threat one and one eight type lines that they've had in the past though they have tremendous goaltending and a good physical defense but Denver is as confident as any team in the nation right now and they should be they might have the best goalie in the country no one's more one more hockey game to the college hockey level than Jerry York and he joins us now via the telephone and uh, coach you haven't played many hockey games in March rust or rest that's kind of the issue we talked about in the newsroom what's your concern as you enter the tournament not having played many games uh, my biggest concern is uh, our bracket has three uh, tournament champions in it and we face off against Denver who has uh, won seven national championships uh, you know, with George and Murray Armstrong and now have another uh, outstanding coach in Jimmy Montgomery so rest are uh, a lot doesn't matter to me. We're, we're scheduled to play on, in Worcester close by against a very, very good Denver team. 
You know, Coach, the one thing that I love about your team is the fact you've got a big-time stud goaltender in Thatcher Demko, who as a freshman has done very, very well in a very, very good league that can play offense. What factor has Demko brought to your team in terms of getting it to play with confidence, knowing he's going to make you some big saves? Oh, he's very competitive. Uh, practices are, and games, uh, that, that quality is, is difficult to have uh, on a consistent basis, but he has it, and certainly uh, he's a... Uh, strength of our one of the strengths of our club uh, Dave Jerry as you head to practice this week what's going to be your message what's going to be your focus in practice as you prepare for your first game well we always talk here about winning national championships and uh, that's our main goal and and now we're in a field of 16 and you know we really understand that no lousy teams make this field and uh, we have to be at the top of our game and uh, you know, polish some things in our game, uh, defensive coverage, uh, a forecheck, and it's more about what we do as a club rather than what, you know, a Jimmy's team will do as far as power plays and PKs. We're, we're, we're more concerned about ourselves. 4 o'clock Eastern time, ESPNU. Good luck, Jerry. Yeah, thank you very much. So Boston College begins their quest against Denver. As the coach mentioned, three uh, conference champions in that regional. All right, let's head east now to Bridgeport, Connecticut. Again, all four of these Fan bases can drive to Bridgeport, Connecticut. Could make it a real interesting barn as we look at uh, these matchups. What jumps out at you, David? Providence College and John Gillies, their goaltender. John Gillies, no question, is the best goalie of the four teams in this tournament. Big game experience, playing for Team USA in the World Juniors. Had a big-time career in the USHL. If he is on, he is going to be really hard to beat. He's been a little up and down. But if he's at his best, he becomes a big-time roadblock. And the uh, Quinnipiac's had some key injuries late in the year, but it looks like some of their key guys uh, will be able to go in that matchup in that regional in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Of course, the Hobie Baker is a part of the Frozen Four weekend. We have our 10 finalists here, and they announced a winner in Philadelphia. And, you know, Johnny Gaudreau certainly would be the favorite. Grew up close to... To, grew up a Flyer fan, grew up in Southern Jersey. It would be a great storybook year for him, for his team to get there, and for him to win the Hobie. We, we take a look at this list. So many great players. Shane Gostas Bear from the Union, who's just as good a mobile offensive defenseman as you can find. Uh, I love the way Nick Dowd played this season. Josh Archibald in Nebraska, Omaha, came out of nowhere in the second half of the season and was unbelievable. It seemed like every time you open up a box score, he had a hat trick. And C.J. Mott, goaltender at Ferris State, has provided a lot of big-time saves and given them a ton of wins. All right, a lot more to go in this show. If you got a, you got a question via Twitter, hit me up. I'll ask Dave. He's going to give us maybe our, the team that kind of resembled Yale last year that could go all the way and win it. Who does he think will get to the Frozen Four in Philadelphia? All kinds of college hockey talk continues on ESPNU. And, of course, Dylan Donahue. He's got some sick mitts on the lacrosse field. Great lax action. On the way, the countdown. Duke, Syracuse. It's a beauty coming up next on the U. You're watching the 2014 NCAA Hockey Championship Selection Show, presented by Northwestern Mutual. The 2014 NCAA Hockey Championship Selection Show is presented by Northwestern Mutual. Proud to be an official corporate partner of the NCAA. the second time in three years, the Ferris State Bulldogs will call themselves conference champions. Well, that was beautiful. Love getting the pictures on Twitter. Ferris State. The Soda Pop and St. Cloud State. Pictures of Soda Pop watching the NCAA selection show here on ESPNU. We thank you for all of your comments on Twitter and also we'll answer some questions at the very end. Uh, let's start with toughest region. Um, again, all these teams are good, but is there one that stands out? I really think the West region is a tough region. You've got Minnesota in there, you've got St. Cloud State in there, and you've got Notre Dame in there as, as the big three. Right. And you got two of those teams that are playing basically at home. And that's an interesting part of it. You got Minnesota playing in the XL Center where they are as comfortable as anybody and have won some big games there. They won the 2012 regional there that sent them to Tampa. 
and that Frozen Four. You got St. Cloud State, who, as Bob Motzko mentioned, their fans are going to come down the road. They got a great fan base at St. Cloud State. They've got a good team, and that team can really go. And again, you got Notre Dame. Notre Dame on any given night can be really good, but they can also at times flatline offensively. So it'll be interesting to see which Notre Dame team shows up. But if they're defensive game, their attention to detail game is there. Notre Dame is a tough team to beat. Had four first-timers in Pittsburgh last year. We'll see what happens as we head to Philadelphia. Um, any Yale-like team, under the radar team, a team like Yale that could come out of nowhere, make the Frozen Four and win it all? Uh, there's a couple. Absolutely no question to me. It's the University of North Dakota. Mm. This is a team that had a really, really bad first half, and then all of a sudden, late November, they lost at home Friday night to St. Lawrence, had a team meeting, and then the following night went out and won, and they lost very few games after that. Now, they had a hiccup the other night in the NCHC playoffs and were eliminated. They had to win their third place game to get in. But North Dakota is strong. They're physical. They're fast. They're a some of their parts team. Zane Gothberg has been very good in goal. I think despite the fact that this team does not have the stars they used to have, they are a some of their parts team hmm. without a go-to guy. It makes them look more of a cohesive unit. I think Dave Haxall and his staff have done a great job this year. 12 years in a row making the tournament. That's the longest current streak going right now in the nation. So in terms of favorites uh, to get to Philly, I know that's a team North Dakota you think certainly can continue their hot streak who's kind of lined up though maybe perhaps in terms of talent and bracket to get to Philly and win it you know it's funny you take a look at these brackets and you can pick almost anybody at any time right. when you look at the big picture of this and a team that can really step out and win this whole thing for a lot of different reasons I really really like Union College mm. I just think they play hard I think they can play any style the thing that impresses me the most about Union is whether or not they're up 3-1 2-1 4 nothing. it doesn't matter they continue to come back and back check they continue to play hard in the corners they continue to win one on one battles on the walls I like the fact that they combine grind and grit with offensive Ability, and they've got the two big defensemen in Goss Despair and Matt Bodie. They're both very different defensemen, but they both provide a ton of offense for that team when they need it. Balance is the key for Union and very well coached. They're playing a great barn as well. Okay, we got your Twitter questions coming up. We also have the, the television lineup so you know when your team's going to play and where. Again, we appreciate the folks at Minnesota watching our selection show here on ESPNU. The Gophers, the number one overall seed. I don't know, it just seems like it might be time for them to win another one. We'll see. But again, here's your schedule on Friday. 2 o'clock Eastern time here on ESPNU, Vermont in Union. Check out Shane Goss's Bear, Hobie Baker, finalist, future flyer. 4.30 Eastern, ESPN3, Colgate, Ferris State, Quinnipiac, Providence as well. And then on Saturday, you see the lineup of games there. Full boat action, ESPN2, ESPNU, ESPN3 as well. Excited to have some of these regional games on ESPN2 this year. All right, some Twitter questions. We begin with Chris. Who's the one player we don't know about, Dave, that will make a difference in this tournament? Good question, Chris. I'm going to give you a bonus. I'm going to give you two All of them. Right. Number one, Dan Doremus at Denver, who I think has been great through this tournament. He centers their big line and has scored some humongous goals. Steve Santini, defenseman from Boston College, big, strong, physical, great first pass out of the zone, not afraid of anybody, and he can set a physical tone. Uh, does Greg Carey have a shot to win the Hobie Baker Award, and who is your favorite for uh, to win the Hobie? My favorite to win the Hobie Baker Award, I think, is Nick Dowd, but I think Greg Carey's had a great season. He's a small guy that can play big, tremendous ability to score goals. And uh, who's the one team that didn't make the tournament that you think maybe should have or could have by a eyelash? Oh, that's a good one. You know what? After, after watching the NCHC title game, boy, you, you had a feel for Miami. Oh, so close. Well, that is it. Now the games begin on Friday. For Dave Starman, I'm John Butchergrass. We'll see you at the rink.